going and move on with your evening. Um, but we, um, first of all, wanted to really thank you all for coming. And um, also just wanted to hear from folks in the audience. You can either tell us right now, or if you feel like you want to share it in another way, you can also always tweet us, hashtag God Project. So we'll, we're taking feedback via Twitter as well. Um, if, you could, if you could just let us know um, what were some things that stood out for you, things that you're, now that you've seen another show, since you've seen ours, just moments or phrases or pieces of the show that you either resonated with or just were interesting to you. Um, yeah, so you can just call them out, whatever whatever you kind of pulled out or you noticed or stuck with you. I have a question. Is it difficult to maintain objectivity on it? I mean, you're 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 bringing all these different views, and I'm presuming you bring all of your own personal experiences to it. And I just wonder if if that's even an issue. Maybe it's not an issue. Is it more clinical in your analysis of it, or? That's a good question. Sorry, what was the last sentence? Is is your analysis more clinical? Or are you sort of removed from it when you're sort of? Talking about all these different issues, the religions and, and these different religious, religious experiences. Well, I, I say, you know, well, we have a process that uh, really invited us uh, as, like, I'm a community member, I'm not a, a performer, um, to read these surveys. And uh, we were asked often to respond to them, you know, in movement and games and exercises. And, um, and we, we, I guess we never thought we were trying to, uh, it wasn't something like, just really, how do you respond? Just, and there was no right or wrong answer to how you might respond. And, um, and just kept working with this material. And then also did writing ourselves to kind of develop a sense, a slight sense of character, some more than others. Mm -hmm. And then how, and I think you heard this last night, one thing too is then, well now how does your character respond right. to these surveys? So really I'd say, the emphasis was on relationship. Like, how do you relate to these stories? What are they evoking uh, for you? And uh, it wasn't about objectivity more, it was about immersion okay. in this diverse layers of stories. And really kind of thinking of the show after, it's kind of cooking with them <laughs> as different ingredients. A church service. That was my Great. Well, for just a, as, as an example, um, one of the things we did was when we started, we started looking at all of the, we had almost 200 responses. So we started, and some people wrote very lengthy, you know, stories, and some people wrote a few sentences. And so we looked through, we all looked through the material and thought about a potential character that was emerging and we actually then filled out that sur this, this sur online survey as our characters and wrote monologues as their characters. So for example, um, so for example, my monologue started off as the monologue where it was my character, but then I went back into the surveys and totally redid it, pulling pieces. So I probably pulled from 15 different responses for that. Each line was a different response. So it kind of ended up being so much of a composite that it wasn't really, you know, everybody's got something of themselves in a character, but ultimately it kind of got constructed. Okay. Um, here's another question. Um, 
Are there, are there, were there parts of um, the piece that you would want to see more of, or things you, questions you had, things you wondered about? For example, a question like, why didn't I speak? What was going on between me and this character? So any other questions or things? Yeah. Yeah, there was the scene right before you got on stage, where you kind of, you threw out the red table box and all of that stuff, and I think I got it, but I, it wasn't abundantly clear. It was about pleasure and that kind of thing. But I'm, I think I knew that just because I knew that. I don't, I'm not sure it was obvious to me, you know what I mean? Well, in the process of making the piece, um, we thought about kind of the journey that we wanted the play to take. And part of that was called the massive middle. And um, we were thinking about how religion has a lot of like carnal, very like sexual aspects. Yeah. And we thought that would be like a very climactic part of the piece. And that would really portray some of like those carnal aspects. Oh yeah, I got that. Well, pleasure can be a spiritual practice. So yeah. I, about, I would have liked to see more of that, I guess. Oh, yeah. More clearly defined, maybe that's Thank you. Thinking. That's really helpful. Anything else? Any questions or Things you want to see more of, and things more clear. Were the texts and whatever else we were receiving on your phone over there? Is that from like an improv thing, or was it all play? The responses to what was being said was an improv. Like we kind of had, yeah. So everything that we heard, that was basically our first time on stage hearing it, and so it's just how we react to those phrases right now. We prepared using like kind of just random phrases, but what you saw on stage was improv. You worked really well together. There's a lot of, I mean, your energy was a lot the same. It's really impressive. Um, I enjoyed in the beginning when uh, the uh, the actress. Uh, kind of was uh, she, she was somewhat removed from the uh, from the play, and was describing to us what the play was going to be about or uh, setting up for us. Um, uh, I, if, for me, it seemed like she was like almost like a uh, like, like an abstract for uh, some kind of investigation or some kind of essay. Um, and I would have liked to see a uh, a recurrence of that if that were turned into like a, like a motif throughout the piece so that it's like, okay, we're going on this exploration together and we go into it and we come back out and we go into it and come back out. Um, I think, uh, yeah. That's, thank you, thank you, that's really helpful. I mean, I think one of the things that we're, we're definitely trying to do is, you know, because process, you know, as a, the way that we work, the process is really important and, um, you know, it's a community building exercise as well as creating a, a show and so I think um, the, the idea of bringing the process into it is really important so that's really helpful feedback for thinking about how that can, you know, and certainly motif is mm -hmm. something that we really love so thank you. That's really Sorry? Okay. Any other, any other questions or comments? Um, I, I had the good fortune of seeing the talk back yesterday, and, and you all mentioned that you have um, probably like another year of development on this piece. And um, what does that what does that look like? What does the material look like as you keep moving forward? <laughs> um, I'll take a stab at that. Um, one of the things that we're really that we're um, wanting to do is to um, is definitely engage with more um, LGBTQ spiritual communities so get more people um, more people involved to contribute material because our last project probably had about over the course of the project we had probably you know over a hundred people contribute but we uh, either via interviews or workshops and these kind of interactive story circles that we held. So getting like as much of a plurality of voices as possible, like I think that's the first thing is to try to get as much, go back out and get a lot more material. Um, and then 
work on it a lot longer. I mean, this is our first kind of, we use this festival as a deadline, like really kind of like through what we had to go on Slack together pretty quickly. So, um, you know, taking more time to really build it out and engage more and more people because it kind of sees like ever widening circles of people involved who touch the project or process along the way. Thank you very much. who worked in Chicago, um, a designer on the East Coast in uh, South Carolina, some of the actors in New York, and a choreographer, um, and then me in California. Uh, and we were in Chicago. And these two were in Chicago. So, so a lot of our process actually happened via the internet, which is why this is so appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, we would uh, conduct rehearsals kind of digitally sometimes, but also I, up until last week, I was helping a lot with the writing process and, and submitting things online, which I would then see show up in drafts of the script that I could read. Um, and then just actually recently started playing the part uh, to prepare for this festival. Great. Which actually was played by someone else in Chicago, someone, uh, Lindsay, who, I don't know if she's watching or not, but hi, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> who, so she played it in Chicago. So, so it's been a really fun process for us to bring all of that together. I just wanted to to say that because that's been so important to us. So I would be interested in hearing just um, quick moments, images, um, little any little thing that stood out to you that sort of resonated with you or that you still remember or you're wondering about or curious about, um, starting with just little moments and then we'll go a little deeper. Are there any things that doesn't have to be a judgment, just I remember this, or that struck me. Yeah. I like the really nice, small attention to detail of the physical movements, like kind of uh, Ben with your constant like little fluttering of your wings and how that would kind of come out throughout the play and show up even in kind of unexpected places was really, really nice. And same with your movements as well, Michelle. Like nice attention to detail. Yeah. That's what I was going to say as well. Um, <clears throat> You just had so many, uh, it just seemed meticulous, like that uh, you had so many uh, small actions that were very obviously choreographed. Um, there was the side side, oh goodness, <laughs> side side of the front. <laughs> well, at least that damn buzzing will be gone. Uh, no, yeah. we're fine. Uh, those things, uh, locking and unlocking your door, opening your laptop and working from your hip, all of these tiny things like that I thought were really fantastic. trying to connect and we're finally, you know, or Claire was finally getting this connection with the bees or the single bee or the plural bees, whatever, but there was no physical touching. And I thought, I don't know, that was really interesting to me. Because yeah. usually that's such a, that's something that you would expect. Yeah. I just want to piggyback on that. I just remember at one point just feeling this tremendous relief that you weren't touching. 
Because I just feel like there's such a cornification of the entire public space at this point. You know, and I'm totally pro-sex, but it's just especially <laughs> to see a man and a woman interacting on the stage, and especially you as me, without it becoming sexualized, was just, and, and that the, the relationship was something else. It was just so fantastic, opening up a different space. Technologies and when you, that one moment when you said, you know, you couldn't taste anything anymore. It was all about the things you love. Like Bill Gates said, all this technology was going to help people explore what they love. And here we finally see somebody who, like Colony Collapse, you've had the human version with new technology, and you've lost touch. You, you yeah, you, you're, you're just exhausted from this buzzing machinery all around you. And the bee is having in their own parallel universe a similar experience related to the same culture, and then finally there's a, 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 a beginning to get together and perhaps a, a vision of collaboration to stop this. I, I know I'm being inarticulate, but. Oh, that's very articulate. Thank you. Did anyone get something different? Yeah. I think mine is sort of similar, but um, I, had, I definitely had the moment. I saw the show last night. Well, it's funny. Um, but when, uh, when the bee started saying the there's no more honey, there's no more lavender, et cetera, et cetera. It just kind of, for me, it turned into a moment of how hard it is to be happy. And like all of the happiness that these people experience has gone away. And so that's kind of what it became, became about for me in that moment. And then with their transition into the manifesto, we're trying to take something in from that. Yeah. Oh, to me, I, my own interpretation was that it was about alienation of the woman seemed so closed in and alone uh, that she kind of psychologically starts communicating with the insects that are that are just outside. Uh, I was wondering, the, the story was so unusual, I was wondering if you could shed some light on how it originated. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, it actually was sort of random. Um, in that I wanted to create a little, for, for another project, I wanted to create a little three minute piece. That, you have to do an audition, right? Yeah, I wasn't going to say that part. But it, was, it was for an audition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they wanted to see a, um, a, an original piece, not a monologue. Well, they said you could do a monologue if you wanted to, but we prefer to see an original piece. And I had this deadline coming up, and um, so I didn't know what to do, and I felt all this pressure. And so for a while, I thought I was going to do this monologue that actually was about falling and falling in love. And I personally really enjoy falling. I kind of find it fun to just find different ways to fall. I know that sounds weird, but um, <laughs> the, the idea that you're going to be standing and fall down. And so I was intrigued by this monologue, but then I realized I'm, I'm actually intrigued by that idea. And then at the same time, my house was infiltrated by bees. <laughs> <laughs> and so suddenly I had, well, they weren't bees, they were wasps. Um, and so I had <laughs> gradually all these bees coming into my house, and it started with 10, and then there were 50, and then there were 100, and then there were 200, and I'm calling the landlord and saying, got to get rid of these somehow. Um, and meanwhile, I'm trying to write this piece, so I was like, well, I guess I'll write about what's happening, sort of. And I kept avoiding writing about it by going online and being like, hmm, I think I'll go do, I'll go check this news site instead. So then I started writing about that because I just thought I, I have to do this, so I'll just write those things. So I made this three minute little piece. That isn't really what you saw tonight, but it's where it started. And then I approached all of these people um, to help me make it more complex. And so we started researching myths about bees, um, the colony collapse disorder, um, how technology was related to that. and. 
and then just ideas started coming in from that, and the story morphed. Yeah, so, so Michelle first approached me at Christmas this last year um, and told me that she was working on this piece and asked if I wanted to be involved. And at first, I mean, I would say for the first couple months of the year, we were just collecting kind of information about bees, uh, right? And we knew we had this Claire character, we knew we had these bees characters, so we were doing, we, I think we developed a lot of material, uh, not all of which made it into the final product. And then, very little probably, yeah, the tip of the iceberg. So we, and at some point, we, we narrowed it down to kind of the through line that you, you saw, which does have a lot to do with alienation, it has to do with technology, um, and, then has, and then centers around this kind of transformative encounter between uh, the bee and Claire. So then once we knew we had that, we knew we had a story, and we started putting these pieces that we developed together. Um, but we spent a long time just figuring out the story structure. Like yeah. we got it down to two sentences and then created scenes to fit those sentences. Um, oh, because I, yeah. Well, <laughs> go ahead. I, I was, I, I, I don't know if this is gonna be helpful, but since I've seen it twice now, it came up last night, there was a question about the shift from Into the Manifesto. Yeah. And when I was watching it for the second time tonight, I was thinking to myself that um, it, that, Prior to that, there's this, like, there's little by little, there's a self-discovery about, you know, what, like, what, you know, why is everything tastes like cardboard, why it's, like, you know, the bee is kind of trying to, you know, egg her on or trying to kind of be, like, catalyst to that and this relationship. And so there's, like, these kernels that start to happen, and it's, it happens in a relationship, but it's also the self-discovery. And when the manifesto portion starts, it suddenly is very presentational and it goes out. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's necessarily, you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily like doesn't work. I think it does, but it's. I think what I'm missing is a little more of a transition between this internal process that she's having, that she's like, oh, like this, oh, 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 and then all of a sudden it's out. Yeah. And so I think maybe it's, my, my thought tonight was maybe it's just a transitional, the, yeah. there's more of a transition there that kind of pulls out yeah. and suddenly what, what, what it feels you, like it needs that. Right, because the, because the rhythm is so lovely and it kind of, and with the music it goes and it's, you know, so it's, yeah. I'm doing okay. a gesture now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's very helpful. I mean, if, if anyone, wants to talk to us more, I'm, I was going to ask the same question they asked at the end of what you wanted to know more about or what stood out or didn't quite fit for you. So I know we need to end it, but I'm curious about that person. And if you want to keep talking to us, I think it, this is in the program, but we are at tellingofthebees.wordpress.com. Yes. And we have a collaborative blog, which you can yeah, talk yeah. to us on. Uh, and we're going to keep going. So, so yeah, that's us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much.